It's just like watching the detectives. Nearly 14 years before Lindbergh's flight, a lone inventor had proposed a technology he believed would safely carry air passengers across the ocean in comfort, rivaling the day's luxurious steamships. In the 1920s, passenger air travel was just coming into its own. But unlike steamships, passenger airplanes were unable to cross the Atlantic. Here's an article from the New York Times from 1929. Sea drone model gets test today. An experimental model of the giant sea drones, which may soon form the mid-ocean landing field for transatlantic passenger airline, was launched today. The inventor's name was Edward R. Armstrong born in 1876 in Canada. As a boy, Armstrong's favorite writer was Jules Verne, the author of the fantastical novels about conquering Earth's geography. In real life, too, the great leaps in technological invention made anything seem possible. In 1913, when he was 37, Armstrong first came up with the idea for the sea drone. Armstrong wanted to anchor eight sea drums hundreds of miles apart from each other, stretching from New York to England. Airplanes would hop from one sea drum to the next. Lindbergh's 1927 transatlantic flight only fueled more interest from backers like the DuPont Company. After all, Lindbergh's flight was dangerous and uncomfortable. The sea drum would take that trip and make it easy and comfortable, according to Armstrong. Lindbergh even supported Armstrong's effort and his dream. Armstrong began selling the idea to airlines. Everything seemed to point toward Armstrong's dream becoming a reality. So what happened? We are here where the actual sea drum test took place. My office discovered a film reel of the test launch at the National Archives. The riverbank looks very similar. So what happened after the successful test of the model? Well, I have here a headline. Work on Seadrome to begin in 60 days. New York Times, October 23rd, 1929. We are certain now that it is feasible, a member of Armstrong's team proclaimed about the construction of the full-scale Seadrome. But the date on the newspaper tells a story. It's just one day before Black Thursday, the beginning of the great stock market crash of 1929. Seadrome was dead in the water. Immediately, the capital and the investors, the money dried up. They all went away. Armstrong was left with no financing for the Seadrome concept. Secretary of Commerce Daniel Roper was impressed with Armstrong's plan and helped him secure a meeting with the president. He arranged a meeting with President Franklin Roosevelt and showed him the films of the successful test of the Seadrome here in the Chop Tank River. Franklin Roosevelt thought it was a good idea to be pursued. In 1934, Roosevelt brought the engineer before the Federal Aviation Commission. The commission invited several luminaries of flight to testify on the Seadrome concept. And what happened at the hearing? Charles Lindbergh got up in front of the commission and actually testified against the Seadrome. Armstrong must have felt betrayed by Lindbergh. What made Lindbergh change his mind? Charles Lindbergh at the time was working for Pan American Airlines, and they were developing large transatlantic aircraft that would not need to stop at a sea drum. Lindbergh testified that within a year, transatlantic passenger flight would be so advanced that landing on a sea drum would be unnecessary. Airline executives also testified against the sea drum. They said if the government paid for a chain of sea drums, it would threaten the demand for the transatlantic airplanes they were building. This would, of course, been in threat competition with the Seadrome concept. His technology was used in the development of semi-submersible offshore oil rigs. And this is where it found its rebirth and has been floating all over the world today. So your grandfather worked for the guy who gave birth to the idea that made modern oil drilling a reality. That's huge. We sincerely appreciate all the effort you've put into this. Thank you very much. It's just like watching the detectives.